Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome back to another Docker Compose tutorial. In this tutorial, we're just simply going to Dockerize React, a bog standard React application. We're going to start a React application, Dockerize it, and we go through the process, the basic process here to Dockerize a React application and then just run through Docker Compose and how we can do the same thing with Docker Compose as a single container. This tutorial will lead us into the next tutorial where we start to Dockerize React and Django together. So if you are new to this Docker series, you're going to need Docker, Docker Compose installed. So go ahead and install that from the Docker website. Here we're running React. So we're going to need Node uh, to NPM and create a React application. And of course, we're going to need a code editor. So I will go through the code as if we've not seen it before or kind of semi seen this before. Of course, I'm kind of assuming maybe you've seen the other tutorials in this series. So you've got a general idea of what's going on. To quickly run through what we're going to do here, then we're going to build a React application, create a Docker file, create a Docker image, and then run that image in a Docker container. Therefore, we would then have React running in a Docker container. We then take that one step further and create a Docker Compose file and then go ahead and do the same thing again, but this time with volumes so that we can mirror the volume from the container to our local machine so we can work from our local machine. But of course, then it gets updated in the container and then obviously the container is running the, the React application and then will show as normal in your browser. If you look in the code repository that's connected to this video in the video description, you'll find a commands text. Here I put all the commands that we utilize, so there'll probably be some more that we're going to add here as we go along. But first of all, we're going to MPX and create a new React app. So you're going to have, need to have, uh, for example, Node installed here. So if you haven't already got that here, I'm in Windows. I'm using Windows here, so I've downloaded Node, of course, and I'm now running MPX to create a new React app. So let's call this app uh, core, for example. So we'll let that go ahead and build our React application. So if you're new to React, then you have to remember here that we've created our React application within the core folder here. So we just need to, in Windows here, just change directory to core. So just make sure you've done that. Right, so anything else now we're going to be doing within this core folder. So we can test to see if it's working, npm, and then start, we'll give that a go. So that should start our application and then show us in the, it should open up a new window if you're using Chrome automatically. Okay, so you can see that's working. So now what we're going to do is get this to work with in a container. So the first step is to create a Docker file. So capital D, lowercase f, there's no file extension here. So just a Docker file. So our base image here for our React application, we're going to install the official node or use the official Docker node image. And just take a look again, if you're not familiar with this, this is a Docker Hub where all the official images are placed, which we can utilize. So here we're going to run 15.13.0. I'm gonna choose the Alpine version, so a slim down version. So let's go ahead and do that first. So there we go. So that's the, the image that I'm going to utilize as the background operating system for my containers. So on this operating system, say I want a folder where I'm going to place my application. I'm going to call that core. I'm going to match it up with my folder name here where my React app is based. And then what we're going to need to do now is map across the environment path for the node modules. So that's going to look a little bit like that. Okay, so here we're going to create a path to the node modules on the server. So the path is going to be dot slash and then node module. So inside of core here, and there'll be a new folder on the server node modules. Okay, so with that in place, we are now going to copy across everything here over to the server. Um, because remember, this holds our, our React application here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then lastly, last of all, sorry, um, let's go ahead now and run npm. So we're going to copy this across and run npm build. Now, 
you might be wondering, well, there's no point because you're copying everything across. Yeah, that's the case. But in that case, you get the idea here of what potentially is going on. So we're going to, for example, if we don't, if we don't send across the node modules over to the server and run npm run build, that's going to look then in the package JSON files and look for all the dependencies. So if you're familiar to Django, for example, you know that this is the pip install requirements. So this is the same type of setup here, but with packages for React. So we can go ahead and run those and build those. So last of all, then, if we want to get the actual uh, everything up and running, of course, we're going to need to start the server by typing npm start. So we'll create this command here, npm comma start. That will then start the server. So this is basically a, a kind of a very lightweight, minimal baseline configuration for just getting your application from your local machine into an image and then onto a container and start it. So let's go ahead and control C and just close that server. Right, so now what we're going to do is obviously build this. So the command is here. So here we're going to use docker build and then we're going to tag it with react. So we're going to give it a tag of react and then the dot at the end referring to this folder here. So make sure you're in the core, otherwise this isn't going to work. So this is going to build an image from the information that we provided here in our Docker file. So that will probably mean that the image will need to be downloaded, this image here, and then you can go ahead and make a folder, set up the environment path here and copy across all these files here in this folder and then run the npm run build. So that's what it's doing now. And there probably isn't too much that needs to be done there um, because we're assuming potentially that we're just copying everything across. And then finally, we're going to run the fi final command here, um, npm start. So obviously what we've done now, I say obviously, what we've done now is we've built an image. Here it is. Now, this isn't running at all, so we haven't actually started a container and placed the image in the container and started it yet. But when we do that, what's going to happen is this command is going to run. It's going to start the server. So let's go ahead now and start. So what we can now do, for example, is just start the server. So docker run react. So what should happen now is a container should have started. It's um, coming across the image and spinning it up. And now it's running. So we can clearly see it's running. So apologies uh, here for the Docker, sorry. Um, so we can clearly see it's running here. So what we can now do is test it in our browser again. Now it's likely this isn't gonna work because we've forgotten some of the commands, but I just wanna show you this is the case. So when we refresh here, it's looking for it, it can't find it. So the problem is here is that let's remember that React uses port 3000. So we're going to need to cross map across at some point that port. So we can do that using the run command. So let's just uh, close down this container. I'm just going to manually remove uh, this container here. Why not? OK. Let's go back. So let's run a command, a run command that potentially also includes the port numbers that are going to be needed to map across the container to our machine so we can actually access port 3000 in our container and therefore access our new React app. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to bind our computer's port 3000 to the container's port 3000 and that's the default port that when we run React, it runs on that port in the container. So we're just going to map that across and that's going to allow us then to, when we type in the, the correct URL or domain name for React here, that's going to take us directly to our container and show our React application. So let's go ahead now and utilize this. That should spin up a new container. Here we go. You can see here it says port 3000. So let's go back into our browser here and refresh and there we go so we now have react running in the container so what we can do if we go into our containers on the left hand side here we can cli just a, a quick easy way of getting into the container if i type in ls you can see that these files here represent or are copied across from my application here so 
that's where those files come from because I copied them across. So here copy dot dot, so dot referring to this directory, dot referring to the directory on the container. So let's now convert this to Docker Compose. So here we're just going to run the one service with Docker Compose. So we're just going to swap this over and maybe expand upon this later. Of course, in the next tutorial, like I said, we're going to run React with Django. So this is obviously going to come in handy, this information. So let's just start off by making sure we're in the core. New file, Docker Compose, is YAML file, YML. So that's our Docker Compose. And if you're not if you're new to Docker Compose, here is simply, let's just think of it as a way of describing multiple services. So here we've just got one service, which is uh, just spinning up React. Uh, so with Docker Compose, we're going to create multiple services eventually. Here we're just going to have the one, which is going to be, in this case, a simple React application. So let's go ahead and write this out. So we start off again, Assuming that you've seen the previous tutorials, we start with the version. So this is the version, Docker Compose version. So have a look at the manual if you're not too sure about that. So I'm just using the latest version. So now we're going to describe our service. So we've got service, and then we want to give this service a name. I'm going to call this app, as per normal. And then we want to basically just set context here. Oh, one second. We want to set the build options. Uh, here we're just going to say context dot. So here essentially we're just referring to the fact the Docker file is stored here. There we go. So now with that in place, let's set up a volume. So if you're new to volumes, volumes are basically a way of mapping across our container um, directories onto our computer here. And what we're going to do is set up this simple volume here. We're just going to map from dot so this is this directory here, our working directory. And we're going to map this directory across to colon. So this is somewhere on the container, the core. OK, so let's remember that we're going to create a working directory called core and place all of our code inside of that in the container. So uh, we're basically just going to map across from that container to our local machine here. So anytime we make changes here to these files, it will then just get updated on the container. Now, if we were to delete the container, remove it, all the files here will be persistent within this folder structure here, which is stored on my local drive. So if I were to spin up a container again, then this would just get copied across to the new container, whatever I've updated it to. So now we can go ahead and think about what ports we're going to need. So we know that um, <coughs> React uses by default 3000. So let's do that. Of course, you can change that change the settings by all means. And then we can just go ahead and tag the image app react. Excuse me. Oh, right. And then we can name the container. So container name is just going to be called react container. And then we're going to run a command at the end. So this command here is going to be npm start. So that's going to start the server. Okay, there's two little typos here. One, there needs to be a colon after the context here. And two, there needs to be a space right here. Apologies for that. So those are the two mistakes. Now, it's always good to have mistakes. It will tell you here in the terminal, there'll be some good information that's provided to guide you on where the mistakes are. So normally it is a typo that's a a small issue and that's just going to maybe cause you problems and like I said once you start running the build it will then indicate whether there is a problem with the file it's quite good in Visual Studio Code here so docker compose build now so let's build the image okay so finally then let's go ahead and run the image now it's been created here so we've tagged it as react uh, so let's go ahead and just run docker compose run and then app. Okay, right, so that should take a couple of seconds to get all started, but once it's done, the server should come up and we should be able to then access it via our browser again. And here, of course, we don't need to describe the ports because we already have them in place in our script here. Okay, so that could take some time. Now, eventually, you will get to the point where you can now see that the core is should be viewable from the browser 
Uh, it should be the same thing again, localhost 3000. So let's just go back in, refresh. Looks like it's connecting and we seem to have a problem. So you should have a problem too. So let me just explain what's going on here. Right, so we've created and started this container. I did suggest to you that we've already described this port binding here, but sorry, in the doc compose. But what's happened here is we've utilized npm run and we've run, I think, off the top of my head, you need to explicitly define the ports here, right, when you use a run command. So if we go back into the container here, you can see that there is no port binding described here. So what needs to happen here is that you'll need to just close this down. And let's now just, uh, just for the sake of, let's just uh, remove the container um, and go back to image. Okay, so the image is fine. So now let's run, for example, docker compose. And let's just use up. Okay, so I run that command inside of this folder here. It's going to find the doc compose and docker file. So you can see now there's a container has come up as per normal. It's running. And this time you can actually see the binding. So you just need to be careful of that when you're running um, the docker compose up, sorry, the run, that you need to explicitly define the port. That's just a common problem I see with students um, not forgetting to do that. Uh, it's an easy one to fix. Once you've done it a few times, you won't do that again. So you can see that the container is coming up as per normal. Again, that's going to take a couple of seconds and then it should be ready as per normal. And there we go. So we just go back to the browser. We open localhost 3000. We've met, now made the network bind through the 3000 port and our app is running. So in addition to that, let's just go back now because we've made this volume. We just happen to make the volume the same name as our normal folder. So let me just show you that. Uh, so you can see this volume here. So we're mapping across the volume from the container to our localhost here. So let's just create a new file here called test.txt. Right, so I'll make a new file here. Make sure it's in the core folder. That's being mirrored across. So let's go back into our container. So I'm just going to open up the CLI here on the right hand side just to make it easier and quicker to do. And I'm going to type in ls to list all the files here and folders. And you can see here a text.txt .text is there. So everything is being copied across. If I were to make a file here, it would then be copied across to my local machine and so on. So you can see that if I did now close my container, everything should persist, all my data will be persisting on my local machine. And this is a way of, another way of working if you want to run from within a container. Obviously here there may not be much benefit just running like this as a Docker container, but obviously once you add more services, etc., then it becomes um, a little bit more beneficial potentially, particularly if you're going to run this on a local machine. So there we have it, Docker, React. So of course, there's many other ways of setting this up. This was just really an introductory tutorial to get started utilizing React and Docker. And you can see there's a few things there that needs to be done in order to get React working. And obviously, if you understand React, you understand the packages and the folder structures. Of course, what I didn't show you, for example, is that what we can do now is go ahead and because we don't want to copy across Docker Compose and Docker file, for example, over to the server or into the container. So we could create a, a simple file, of course, a Docker ignore file. So let me just drag an example in here, dot Docker ignore. Here you can just select what files you want to ignore. So Docker ignore, Docker file. Um, you could add Docker Compose to that, of course. So set up your Docker ignore file if you don't want to move across. Now, another thing that I didn't mention more advanced here is that this type of setup, you're pretty much mirroring the node modules across. So you probably want to set up a cache or a cache, depending on what word or how you pronounce that word, um, in your settings or when you use the docker run command so that it doesn't take as long. It just speeds up the process of getting your React application started, at least to begin with. Thank you very much for listening. Like I said, in the next tutorial, we'll expand this and then move into Docker plus Django. 
and have a look to see how that plays out in a Docker Compose file. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.